Hey guys, it's Kathleen back with another What's Sold video. I actually did not go yard selling this weekend at all. I didn't visit any sales. To begin with, there was nothing that was like earth shattering because I probably would have because I'm very weak. Um, so if I had seen any sale that was fabulous, I wouldn't have been able to resist. So everything was just meh. So I opted to be an adult and to stay home and to hit up my death pile. And so that's what I did. So I've been just photographing, measuring and digging all weekend. So it's been fabulous. But you know, what's so funny is that you start doing that and you actually find things that you for totally forgot that you even had. So it's a good thing. Anyway, if you're new to my channel, I'm a part-time reseller and a full-time school counselor, and I have an eBay store with my sister who's also an educator. So if you like all things related to thrifting content, you are at the right place. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and um, join our little reselling community. All right, guys, let's get right into it. I've got about 28 items, not about, I have exactly 28 items that have sold within the last couple of weeks that I'm gonna share with you. First up is this set of Pottery Barn Kids Patrick Twin Sheets. These were actually Karen's, so zero cost of goods. Yay, thank you, Karen. Um, my nephew slept on them one time before he decided that he was not feeling the twin bed. And so they were literally slept on one time. They sold within just a couple of days for $30. I grabbed these five um, teaspoons that are stainless steel, Japan, vintage, and they are in the pattern Versailles. So I grabbed these at an estate sale several months ago. It was a lot of the entire set of silverware for this style, Versailles, and I just lotted it up into five different lots. So I only paid $5 for the whole lot, and um, that means my cost of goods for this is just a dollar and it sold for $20. I recently sold a set of forks from the same pattern for $38, so I have more than my, my money back, obviously. And then I still have the other three lots yet to sell. Okay, I grabbed this Gap denim blazer at a yard sale. I think it was like a yard sale slash estate sale because it was definitely inside. And everything was only a dollar. She was just trying to get rid of everything. Um, this was in a size 16 and I really didn't know a lot about it to be honest with you, but I figured it's the gap, it's a size 16, it's denim, it's vintage, all the things. So it was only a dollar that definitely factored into it. So anyway, I brought it home with me and it sold for $20. Karen picked up this Blanca. I think that's how you say it. I don't know. Um, my French is not so good. Anyway, it's B-L-A-N-Q-U-E, and it is like this button-down tunic, very log and look-ish. Um, she grabbed it at Goodwill for $5.99, and it sold for $35. This game is vintage, and Karen grabbed this at a yard sale. She only paid $3 for it, and it is called the Asmodee Rise of Augustus game. Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know a whole lot about it, but let me tell you something. Some of those really weird games sell very well. This was no exception. Now it has sat around for a while, um, but we only paid three bucks for it and it sold for $31. So I would do that every single time. So it was a really decent flip. I always take the time to look up these vintage games. Some of them are big fat losers. Exhibit A, two weeks ago when I picked up that headache game. Oh, I ended up just donating it, not worth it, not worth my time. But a lot of times you can hit on something that's gonna sell for a really decent profit. I've sold some of these vintage games um, and even not so vintage games, but like the Cranium games and everything, and they've sold it for like 50 and $60. So definitely, definitely take the time to at least scan the barcode when you are um, thrifting and make sure that you're not leaving something that's gonna flip for you really decently um, on the table. Okay, Karen picked up this brand new Paul Mitchell, and I think it's called Mitch Styling Clay. Um, she grabbed it at a yard sale for only a dollar, but it was brand new in the package, and it sold for $17. This Athleta Uptempo long-sleeved shirt was brand new with the tags. We got it at a yard sale for only $5, and it sold for $34. These flyer coveralls were such a good find. So I was at this yard sale probably in like May or June and they were selling anything 
clothing wise was 50 cents. So I found these coveralls and I didn't know anything about the brand. It's the Flyers brand, which did not ring any bells for me. However, it was a size 40 regular, so a large size. Coveralls do pretty well. Now in the past, I've sold Carhartt and Dickies and things like that. But for 50 cents, it was worth taking a chance. Well, let me tell you something, y'all. This ended up being such a great deal because these were military coveralls. So they had a following. Who would have thought coveralls would have a following? But they do. And so these sold within two days of having listed them. Now remember, I paid 50 cents for them and they sold for 30 bucks. Go figure. I mean, I really thought I was gonna get about eight to $10 for them. So that was a really nice surprise. Karen grabbed this John Varvados men's long sleeve black cotton shirt. It is in a size extra large. She got it at a yard sale for only a dollar and we flipped it for $19. I would say that John Varvados has a good sell through rate because I actually sold this shirt twice. Because when I went to delist it through Vendu, which is what I use to cross post, um, it gave me that message that it has offers on it. And so I totally forgot to go back and to do that, you know, that little trick where you change the size in Poshmark so that you can delist it, delist it, even if it has offers. Totally spaced on doing that. So a couple of days later, it sold again on Poshmark. So I would say if you see John Varvados out in the wild, definitely pick it up. Not that it sold for $100, but it did sell quickly twice. Okay. Next is this Coach Poppy wristlet that Karen grabbed at a yard sale for only a dollar and it flipped for $19. This Victoria's Secrets shimmer cami was in this gorgeous like pewter color. Now it wasn't um, gold label or anything like that, but it had this nice crisscross detail with the, not lace, but it was like a, um, you know, like a tie or a string type detail. And it was also new with tags. So we grabbed this at Goodwill for only $2.99 and it sold for $22. All right, I don't know if y'all remember, but a couple of months ago, I went to this yard sale and there was a ton of Harley Davidson clothing. And a lot of it was new with the tags. And so I heard her say to somebody she was selling them for $2 a piece. So I went through, I picked out 20 of my best pieces or the, what I thought were the best pieces. And I went to check out and she was selling them for 50 cents a piece. And I didn't go back and get the rest. Y'all, I have had such remorse, I can't even tell you. You talk about buyer's remorse, this is non-buyer's remorse. I could just kick myself for not just going and grabbing the rest of them. But I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Temporary insanity. Except I had only sold Harley Davidson one other time before and it had not been a really fast flip for me. So I was just a little bit nervous about having so much in my inventory sitting around and doing nothing um, that I got a little scared off, but I could kick myself because those shirts have been selling. So I picked out 20 and so for far, Eight of them have sold, so I've got 12 more listed. Bear in mind, they were each 50 cents a piece. So here we go. This Harley Davidson pink Maverick shirt was a size 2X. It sold for $24. This one is a long sleeve maroon, kind of blingy. It's got these rhinestones and everything on it. It is in a size 2X and it sold for $20. This white embellished burnout t-shirt in a size extra extra large also sold for $20. Next up is this black t-shirt that says born to ride on it. It is in a size 3x and it sold for $15. This white blingy t-shirt was also in a size 3x and it sold for $15. This mesh um, short sleeve shirt was kind of like a football jersey. Really really cute. It was in a size 1W and it sold for $25. This men's full zip hoodie was in a size extra large and it sold for $27. And then the real price performer was this three quarter sleeve orange jersey. It sold at my full asking price of $37 and that was in a size extra large. Okay, so those are the eight things for which I paid 50 cents a piece. 
So for all eight of those things, my cost of goods is exactly $4. And I flipped it for $159 with 12 more still listed. So that was such a good pickup. Definitely put it on your bullet list. I know it's on everybody's bullet list already. I'm not telling you anything new. However, I will not leave them on the table anymore. I promise you. Okay, moving along, I picked up this Bucilla um, New Old Stock Needlepoint Kit. It is um, a cross-stitching kit, and I want to say it's like of a frog or something like that. It may be a pillow um, kit. I can't really remember off the top of my head, um, but I grabbed it at a yard sale. Um, this was at a church yard sale back in June, and I, I only paid $2 for it, and I flipped it for $22. Okay, I got this houndstooth jacket by Pendleton in a size 12 at the same church yard sale back in June. I paid $3.50 for this, and this sold within a couple of weeks of having listed it for $42. This was my first time picking up Pendleton, so I was super excited about that. I have another skirt by Pendleton. It's not really moving all that fast, um, but this jacket really went super fast, so... I would definitely pick that up again. Okay, this GBC Badge Mates Laminator. It is like an ID kit for work. It was new in the box. I picked it up a year and a half ago and um, it has sat and sat and sat. I only paid $2 for it at a yard sale, but it has done nothing for me. Finally, it finally sold for $33.46, which is a really specific offer but I took it because I wanted to get that sucker out. Okay, these Tory Burch Navy Striped Riva Ballet Flats were in a size six and a half. I picked them up at an estate sale in July and I only paid $7 for them. Um, however, they have sat for a while, but they did finally sell for $38. Okay, next is this Vintage Soft Surroundings Pink Fleece Pullover Shirt. And it is in a size 3X. I grabbed this on an estate sale on the last day. And I only paid a dollar for it. Um, and this has been listed for probably about four months. And it finally sold for $20. I grabbed this Fig and Flowers floral tunic. Also in a size 3X at Goodwill. I paid $5.99 for that. And it sold for $20. Then um, Karen grabbed this vintage Kate Spade paisley hobo purse at a yard sale for two dollars and it sold for thirty dollars the last two items i was so surprised with how they did and really really excited at the same time so first up is this 22 piece lot of disney princess magic clip dolls and i picked these up at a yard sale for two dollars and really the only reason i grabbed them is because i thought they were so stinking cute and i know that disney princess sells but i had no idea if this type of toy because it was like a Polly Pocket but not a Polly Pocket. Well I was really surprised when I looked it up and saw that they do sell because otherwise those suckers were totally coming into my classroom. Um, my kids would love playing with them but y'all they sold for $44 so uh oh too bad you're just gonna have to do another coloring sheet because those suckers were sold and they sold pretty quickly. They probably sold in about a month and a half or so. And then the last thing I was really really surprised at this Crabtree and Evelyn Gardenia Eau de Parfum. Okay, it was only 40% full. I paid a dollar for it at an estate sale. It sold for $70. $70 for perfume that wasn't even halfway full. Go figure. I could not believe it when I looked up the comps. I mean, you know I like to pick up perfume, especially vintage perfume, when I can get it on the cheap. Now, a lot of times it, I get it home and it's a super sucky pickup. But if I'm getting it on the cheap, I don't really care because I have enough home runs out of picking up these vintage perfumes that it more than makes up for it. So my lesson to you is definitely be picking up these vintage perfumes. If you can get them on the last day of an estate sale and you're paying only 50 cents or a dollar for them, you don't know what they might end up bringing you in. Um, I picked up some Jessica McClintock's a couple of months ago and I was shocked. I made over a hundred dollars on two separate items that I picked up and I paid a dollar a piece for them. That's a great return. So definitely don't pass over used perfume. You just have to know that you can't list it under fragrances on eBay because they don't give you the option of listing it 
as used, you have to go in under collectibles and do it um, in fragrance under collectibles. Per, I think it's like perfume. I'll flash it up there. But you definitely go into collectibles instead of health and beauty. And that then when you get to collectibles, then it'll give you the option of listing it as a pre-owned instead of just only having the choice of new. Okay guys, so for those 28 items, I paid exactly $55.97. And if you divide that by 28, then that gives me an average cost of goods of exactly $2. Okay, so that's pretty decent. Um, we are usually somewhere between the 250 to 350 mark. Okay, we sold those 28 items for a total of $774.46. And we paid fees of approximately $100.69. And so if you back all of that out for those 28 items, that left us with a profit of $617.80. So really good. We're really excited about that. I mean, who wouldn't be? And we are listing like crazy in order to get ready for Q4. So I'm really excited to start doing some what sold videos once um, Q4 gets underway. All right, guys, that is everything. As always, if you like our content, please hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. And remember, it's not cheap, it's thrifty. Bye, guys.